Hello dears, the topic of today's lecture is English as a global language. In this lecture, we will be uh, focusing on David Crystal book, English as a global language. David Crystal is a very famous linguist. Now he has written a book, English as a global language. In the book, the first question he asks, what do we mean by saying that a language is a global language? Suppose we say Pashto is a global language. What do we mean by that? He says that a language becomes a global language for one reason. Political power of the people. A language becomes important because of the people who use that language. Any language that is used by the people and if those people are politically powerful, dominant in the world, their language can become a global language. Because if the people, the users are not important, if they are not dominant, their language cannot become lingua franca or universal language or world language or global language. There are so many other names people suggest for this global language status. In the first three chapters, he traces the rise of English. It took almost 1300 years to reach its global status because it was introduced to this world by Anglo-Saxons and Jutes, you know this, in 5th century when they conquered Britain. They are the forefathers of English language. They brought English language to Britain and thus English started as a language, although the dominant language of the time was Latin. And then these English people, they were conquered by many other countries and languages. For example, they, con they were conquered by uh, Scandinavians in 7th century, 8th century, 9th century. First 25% of England was under the rule of Scandinavian rulers, then 50% and then in 1013 the whole England was under the rule of Scandinavian king. Thus, Scandinavian languages affected this language fine. Then we know that in 1066, England was conquered by William, by a French ruler. Okay? And so, French language dominated English language. Till 13th, 14th century, English was the language of the lower people, lower class. French was the language of fashion, French was the language of literature, and French was the language of the society, the elite. Okay? And gradually there are so many factors, you might have discussed it, uh, the rise of English in the Middle English period. There are factors like Black Death, Hundred Years War, National Consciousness, of English people and thus they focused on their own language. And then after 15th century we see that British Empire it started conquering the world. Okay, this is how he discusses the rise of English, the development of English from its start to this point. Okay, you must know the story of English language. There is a book available, uh, the story of English. And I told you about a book, History of English Language. If you uh, can read that book, you can come to know about English language. We know that the foundation was laid by Britain Empire. The foundation of English is a global language. Britain Empire started conquering major parts of the world. So this global spread of English language was a, because of Britain. There are some other reasons apart from Britain political dominance in the world in the 17th, 18th and 19th century, industrial revolution also played a major role in developing English language as a global language. We also know that scientific invention also aided to this growth of English. The third chapter of the book describes and it discusses the cultural legacy of English language. Its diplomacy, its international communication use, its use in media, its use in education and its use in internet. 
after he discusses how english developed with the passage of time then he discusses what was the recent contribution of english language and still english language is contributing a lot to these fields of social media media internet and it is one of the dominant language in these sectors we know the importance of english language in the international politics because international politics it revolves around the superpower america these days and anybody who is a player in this international politics is a user of english language Okay the final chapter looks at the future of english is a global language and it also discusses what are the situation of the regional dialects of english language what is the future of american english language and what will happen to this english language as a whole this is the book about okay why a global language we say english is a global language The Britain Empire after World War II it was in full retreat it gave freedom to Hong Kong to subcontinent to countries in Africa so Britain Empire it went back to its homeland but when they went back to their homeland they left one thing their language because it is a normal understanding that when english was ruling subcontinent all the official records were maintained in english language and when they give power to pakistan and india it is one example these pakistan and indian governments they were compelled to retain english language because whatever they had got from their rulers was in english language what is a global language a language achieves is uh, its genuinely global status when it develops a special role that is recognized in every country a global language is a language that is used globally in almost all the countries of the world now this might seem like stating an obvious but it is not for the notion of special role has many facets a crystal says that when language gets a special role for communication in the countries of the world it becomes a global language what is this special role this special role is a kind of role where all these people they adopt this one language for this special purpose what is their special purpose to communicate globally there are the kinds of statement which seems so obvious that most people would give them hardly a second thought of course english is a global language nowadays it is a fact people have accepted it what that english is a global language so nobody gives it a second thought it is an obvious statement everywhere you hear it on the television spoken by a politician from all over the world you hear it from your teachers you hear it on media you you read it in the newspapers books are written on this topic english is a global language so it is a straightforward statement wherever you travel you see english signs and advertisements and wherever you go you see english language with people in different countries thus you accept this point that english is a global language. this global language does not mean that it is the official language of the world keep in mind it is not the official language of china it is not the official language of russia it is not the official language of many countries 70 80% countries english is not the official language but they use it globally they exploit that special role that english has got there is a problem if we say crystal says that if we say english is a global language then it means it is not the language of anybody if you say it is a global language then it is not the language of america uk then it is the language of every country or it is the language of no one because it is global this statement makes this uh, understanding of english as a global r is american language r is britain language Uh, difficult because it becomes complex then if you say that this is not the language of america then or uk or any country then what is the standard who are the natives 
who will you call american speakers might grip that they cannot understand the tech support person in india who are who are so grew up as a speaker of english british speaker may look around and say look what the american have done in india this is this is this is he has written but this is a, a fact these days the fact is many people they might be understanding your pakistani english but still unconsciously they will have issues Right. They would say that our language is standard, and he is speaking non-standard English. The same way a Briton speaker might think that it is my language, so my variety is the standard variety. Although when you go to the native uh, English people, when you go to America, they do not object your variety, but you can see the difference between the two varieties. Now this uh, makes things very confusing and difficult. when you try to learn english language you learn it for certain purposes you know some people they might be learning english language because they want to go to america some people they might be learning english language they want to go to uh, britain some people might want to learn english language to serve in pakistan then the person who is learning english language for america he wants to be taught by the teacher who knows american english the person who wants to go to britain he, he will be uh, in need of a teacher who knows britain english and the person who is who wants to serve in pakistan he might be in need of a teacher who knows pakistani variety answering this question which variety is standard is a very difficult question a student has to familiarize himself or herself with all these varieties because he would be using it globally but student he feels pride when he learns english language why because he feels himself someone special than the other general public suppose you are uh, speaking pashto so you are a community member of kp because pashto is speaking in kp are Afghanistan or Balochistan, a limited area. But if you are speaking English, you are the member of the world. English is a global language. Crystal has used a very interesting word. Sometimes this English language speaker or user, he achieves unfair advantage. Sometimes with only this language, he uh, achieves something which he does not deserve. might not be that intelligent is a pashto or urdu speaker is intelligent in an area i or a field of study but only this english language use will favor him this is the unfair advantage why because of the english importance in the world if you live in a country where your own language is threatened by the success of english you may feel what envious and some people they are angry with this uh, global status of english language because their own language is in danger people are shifting from their own language to english language and what will be the result all the people will become english and the, the pashto or the urdu or any language which is in danger will be dead we know that large number of people in canada usa britain ireland australia new zealand they use english as mother tongue this is l1 day we also know that there is there are many countries in the world where english is the official language and we also know that the trade and business and internet and education and research and scientific development have compelled other countries to adopt english language for their success for their development so either you accept it as culturally significant language or you accept it as historically significant language you have adopted it as a global language isn't it now look at english it is the most accessible 
language to the people of the world. This is one of the features. Now, many other languages, they do not have this feature. Now, this is what English as a global language is. It is either the native language of countries or the official language or it shares the official status with other languages or it is a semi-official language of the countries or it is formally recognized this language is their official la language and in some areas it is a controversial official language for example America we know the factors that have contributed to the dominance of this language and I told you one is the historical factor the growth, the development it has a long history the other is political dominance of the people who are using this language the other is education, culture, technology, science, commerce, trade, its availability to everyone. These are the different uh, factors that have comp contributed to English language and that have made this English language as a world language. There is another very uh, significant feature of English language and that is, as I told you before, cosmopolitan vocabulary. English has cosmopolitan vocabulary so people find their words in English language there is another one as we discussed in English as a world language that the importance of the language does not depend on the number of speaker of that language and we have that argument that Chinese language has lots of native speakers but it is not the global or universal language do you think do you believe that language has any independent existence? A language does not have any independent existence. It exists in the brain of human beings. Languages do not become dominant because they are more expressive, aesthetic, used for literature or religion. Okay? There is nothing inherently better about English. It's nothing special. You know, there is nothing special in English. It is just like Pashto language. It is just like Pashto language. Some appealing things are there in English language and that is this cosmopolitan vocabulary and it is uh, comparatively the structure is simpler than uh, other languages. For example, Chinese or for example, uh, Latin language or Greek languages or Scandinavian languages, it, its structure is simple. It is still very difficult, but when you compare it with difficult structure languages, it is a simple one. We know that a language has traditionally become an international language for one main reason, and that main reason is the power of its people, especially their political or military power. The history of a global language can be traced through the successful expedition of, of the Britain Empire and American superpower. However, while military can establish a language, a powerful economy is needed to maintain and expand it. Economics replaced what? Politics. Previously, American were uh, British were politically dominant, so they, it was the reason for the spread of English language. Now, English is spread because of the economical power of America. But what is lingua franca? The language that is understandable by majority of the people in an area is called lingua franca. For example, we say Pashto is lingua franca in KP because majority of the people understand the Pashto. Urdu is the lingua franca of Pakistan. Majority of the people, they understand Urdu language. And English is the lingua franca of the world. Because majority of the people living in this world, they use English language. It has some advantages. The advantages, you feel very easy with chatting and speaking with other people living in the world because you know that they understand English language, you understand English language, so it, worldwide communication becomes easy. There is another advantage, you do not need to learn many languages, just need one, learn one language and things will be done. There is another 
if all the people they are using one language, there will be no misunderstanding between the people, so there will be peace in the world. This is the, these are the advantages, but there are some other issues. The issue of linguistic power and linguistic death. A language death de does not mean that language died away. It means your your culture is dead. Because language is the representation of your culture. You lose your cultural identity when your language dies away. Edward say fire theory. I think you have studied it. If not, study it. We look at the world through language. Possibly 50% are so the world, 6,000 or so languages will be lost in the next 100 years. What is the future of English as a global language? So a person can easily predict a bright future of English language as a global language, but there are so many factors involved in predicting the future of English as a global language. These factors include the shift of political power, a shift of economical power, a sudden tragedy, the balance of power in the world, scientific development and enmity of the people towards a language. People are ambivalent about English, about adopting or learning English language. They love and hate this language side by side. Some people are there, they, they, they straight away reject this language because of so many factors. Some people, they straight away accept this language. They love it. They hate it. They love it. These two have reasons. There are some people who are ambivalent. Although people have their natural wish, you know, I have my natural wish to use my mother tongue or to use any other language. It is my wish. I, it depends on the wish of a human or individual in this world to use any language. Okay? But this wish is also based on social acceptance. Whether the society where you are living is accepting this wish, the one you are following or not. So again, language adaptation and language learning process becomes a social factor. And it is a general perception that when you use a language, somehow you accept that culture. Somehow that language user, that culture of that language, it influences your culture. The culture where you live. And there are majority of the people who are not in favor of English language because of this cultural factor. Some people, they have uh, very bad memories of their colonial experience and they reject English. Because they have, they know that what English people did to them in the past. Okay. And there is still another, some people, they are against America. So they hate English language. So the rejection of English has also multiple reasons. Okay, the acceptance has multiple reasons. The rejection has also multiple reasons. And among all these issues, there is another issue. And that is the issue of the emergence of new Englishes. The spread of English has shown that it has geographical and social differences in the different context of the world where it is used. It has multiple varieties in the multiple context of the world where it is used. And since 1960, a new field of study started discussing this issue of world Englishes. The different dialects of Britain and American English provide the most easiest example. English is not even single in America. English is not even single in Britain. Now, the new Englishes have highlighted this issue of global English as a global language because which variety should be considered as a global language? Somehow, American English is accepted these days because of the political and the economical dominance and we know that there are many international organizations are there like UNO, UNICEF and World Bank and so many things. People are dependent in America one way or the other way. That's why their English is dominant, but but still, these new varieties, they are emerging and they have their own issues of unintelligibility that we discussed 
Okay, how many people in the world speak English? 375 million people use English language as first language. Then 375 million people they use it as second language. And 750 million people use English language as foreign language. So in total, it is almost 15 hundred million people of the world speak English language. The whole discussion shows that English is a global language has served two things. One is that it has become the language of communication in the world. The other purpose is that it has built another community in the world. The community as I told you that if you speak English language, you feel yourself that you are the member of the world, not the member of a country, because it is a global language. Okay, so solidarity, unity, a kind of. It seems that English as a global language is a very fascinating work, and it opens new insights of discussions. To this moment, we uh, know that English is these days a global language, and we cannot predict its future. Okay. Thank you.